In this video, I want to show you how to build a full stack app that is querying in GitHub's API for an issue label and displaying it on the page for you and having a link so we can go straight to that issue on GitHub. And you may be thinking, well, why are we doing that? Well, if you look at this, we have an issue and I want to filter out all the issues on GitHub, not just for this repo, not just for this organization, not just for my account, for the entire GitHub and I want to look for edihub colon good first issue. And I want to display it on a Next.js API, and then we're going to display it on the front end as well. And I have filtered the data out here. We do get a lot more back from the API, but I do just want to grab the name, the owner, the labels, and the URL for the moment. So let's get started. You're going to see how straightforward it is and how you can query different parts of GitHub's API into your own Next.js API and then also display it on the front end using React. For those of you who don't know, Next.js is a framework around React and it gives you a lightweight backend, which is pretty awesome. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below for more content on web dev, open source, and digital nomad. So first thing we need to do is actually create our project. So to create a Next.js project, we can do npx, create next app and we can put a version number here we're just going to use latest and we can send a second parameter with our actual project name and folder name so here we can just say youtube video so now it's going to create the project for us and it should do it pretty quickly there we go, it's done. And now it gives us some tips on how to start the project. So we've got npm run dev to run the dev environment. And when we make changes, it automatically reloads. Then we can also build the project and this is to, to start it in production mode. So remember, before you start in production mode, you need to build the project first. So let's navigate as it suggests into the project. Let me bring this right back up to the top and we can do npm run dev. So we can check it's all working. There's gonna be no API root now. So if I refresh this, it's gonna say 404. But if we go back to the homepage, we've got our Next.js project, hello world, is what comes with the project. So let's open a new tab on Chrome and I'm gonna open VS Code. Now I've opened VS Code, let me delete all the stuff that we're not gonna need. So in styles, I'm not gonna want these styles. In global CSS, I'm not gonna want probably the ones for the links, save that. And then in public, I'm not gonna want these files either. In API, we will want the NAPI file and hello.js is what the root will be. So it will be a localhost 3000 forward slash API hello in this case, but we're gonna rename that in a moment. Let's just delete things that we don't need. Index.js is actually the component for the homepage and let's remove a lot of this as well. So we're not gonna need these. We will make it a title. We will just say GitHub issues and we're not gonna need these imported either and we're not going to style this up. We're going to keep the styling for another video and you can have a go at this and let me know what you create. So we're going to keep main, but everything inside main is going to go. We don't need this. There we go, looking a lot cleaner now. GitHub Codepilot is making a suggestion. We'll put that in. Let's remove the footer completely. Okay, so if we hit save, now we should have a look and, and that's what we've got. And that's great, we've got a nice clean slate to start. And let's just get the API going. So we're gonna rename this file from hello to GitHub. And then what we're gonna do next, we can leave the output as it is for now. And what we're gonna do is we go to now API forward slash GitHub and refresh it. You can see we get name John Doe. So now the API is working and we know the UI is working. So that's really good, it's a good start, always good to check. Having automated tests also really helps as well. But that's a, a video for another time. I do have some videos on that already as well. So next thing we do is we need to actually query the data from GitHub. And we're actually gonna use OctoKit. So let's just install that as well. So do npm install OctoKit. Okay, now it's done. So next thing you want to do is import OctoKit. Thank you so much, that was a great autocomplete. So now we've got the class OctoKit, we need to create a new object. So we could say OctoKit equals new OctoKit. I'm not gonna pass in any tokens or credentials. We're gonna do this anonymously. We do have a limitation on GitHub API. So if you do find after a while you're getting an error, it'll be because you're hitting the anonymous rate limit on GitHub. So if you put a token, your rate limit increases massively. You can get a lot more requests. Next, we're gonna to wanna to make an object called request and we're gonna to want to make a request to 
GitHub's API. So we want to do an await. So we will need to put an async in front of this function. And it's going to be octokit. And it is going to be a request. Thank you very much, Copilot. It is going to be a get. Let me just autocomplete that. But it is going to be searching the issues. So we will change that. We don't want to do a specific repo or owner organization. So we want to search all issues on GitHub. And the next thing we want to do is the query itself. So we want it to be is an issue and we want it to be is open as well. And the only other parameter is we want it to have a label, but let's change this string to single quotes. So therefore I can use the quotes in here because we have got spaces and other characters as well. So we're gonna say edihub good first issue. So next we'll want to get the data. So what we can do is we can return the data into the browser. So we can re say response.data and let's have a look how that looks. So here's the data that's coming out is actually total of two and we've got items. So these are the items we've got back and there'll be two of them. And there's lots of data in here. So if you're doing a console log, remember to use a console dir and pass the second parameter as an object of depth null. So therefore you can get all of this rather than the console log just putting dot, dot, dot or hiding the information. So we're not gonna wanna send all this data back to our UI. So we could map over this and return the exact data that we want. So what we want to do is probably say constant and we can say results and we can say response dot data dot items and we wanna do a map. So let's map over each item. I've done the curly brace because we want to return an object, but I've also wrapped it in a bracket, so therefore it returns it immediately. So what data are we going to want? I think we're going to need name, owner, URL, and we could return the labels, but we know what labels it has already. So maybe we can do that another time. So let's return these three for the moment. So the name is going to be item.name, and then for the owner, it'll be item.user.login, and you can find that here. So it'd be item, so it's the item that we're in, and it's the user and it's a login. So that's their username on GitHub. So therefore you could always put a link onto that as well. And then for the URL, we're gonna need to have item.html URL. If we don't want the API URL to the resource, we want the HTML so we can click on it and go visit the issue in the browser. So instead of returning response data, we can now return results. If we hit save, and refresh this, we should get two results still, but you can now see the information is a lot more concise. I made a mistake. Name is actually called title in the API on GitHub. So if I refresh that now, you can see, put some photos of yours and daily tips. And we're gonna add and remove some issues so you can actually see this change. So you can see it's really working with GitHub's API. And if you click on these links, it does go to the actual issue and you can see the label is there. So that's brilliant. So if I actually remove this label, let me remove it. So I've removed the label on GitHub, you can see the label has disappeared. And if I go back to here and refresh it, this second one should now disappear. And you can also see the owner are actually from different projects. It's not being fixed to an owner or um, an organization or a user. Now you can see I refreshed it, that second one has gone. Perfect, so if we wanna bring it up in the UI, I mean, that's pretty straightforward as well. If we come back to index.js, we'll want to display a list. So what we can do is under the H1, we could do an unordered list, UL, and then we could do an LI. And then here we could say, this will be um, the title or the name, we call it name. And then after that, we will want to have the owner or the author. And then we'll want the link. We can display the link or we could wrap it around the, um, around the name or the author. But we'll just put it on as a URL added onto the end. So we need to collect this data from our API at the moment. And the docs on Next.js is really good. You can see fetching data. If we go to this section, we can do it as get server side props. It explains when to use it, when not to use it and all the rest, which I think is brilliant depending on your application. Gonna keep things really, really simple for now. And we're gonna use get server side props so that it fetches the data at request time. So just to save time, keep this video short, I'm gonna copy that. I wanna put it above here now and I will remove the, the comments and the URL will be localhost 3000, and it's gonna be API forward slash GitHub as we saw in the browser. And it's gonna get sent to the page under props with the object data. So we'll just do that now. And then here we can start looping over the data. So what we can do, we can open a curly brace and we can say once you've got data and let's also map over the data as well. We're gonna call it an item and then we're going to 
display the li, the list item here. So if we say it's li, so the name, so here we can say item.name, and then we'll want the author. So we can use curly braces and do item.author. And then for the URL, we can do item.url. There we go, let's close the curly brace. And I have got an error here. I'm missing a bracket. Yes, I am. There we go, that should look better. And I just automatically formats it. Love the settings in Next.js. So let's have a look at the page. So the API still works. We've still got one result as we expect. We haven't changed anything on GitHub. And if we load this page, we do actually get the title, which is correct. The author isn't there, but the link is. So why is the author not there? Did I not call it author? Let's have a look. I called it owner. So that's my mistake. So this is why TypeScript really helps sometimes as well. So if I save it, and now you can see that it's got the owner of that. So let me go back to this issue that we had open. Let me put that label back on. So here it was, Eddie Hub colon good first issue. Put that back on. So now we're expecting a name of daily tips repo. I will be the owner of that and the link should be this one to issue 71. So let's hit refresh with no code changes and it does appear. So if I copy this and paste it in, I can, I can put a hyperlink on it. You can see it goes to the, the same one. So it does work. So now we're querying GitHub's API and displaying it in the browser. Yes, it does need styling and I'm sure you can have fun doing that using Bootstrap or Material Design or Tailwind. There's so many that you could use. But I really wanted to show you getting data from another API via our API, manipulating the data using a map here, returning it and displaying it in the UI. Ideally, you'd want to wrap this in a try catch and deal with any errors that happen when making a request to a third party API, which is GitHub in this case. And that's it. So yes, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't look pretty, but it's something that you could do quite quickly. Put it out as an open source project and get other people to help you and collaborate with you on making your project you know, look prettier, add features and make it all functional. Again, like I said, we could make these clickable. Um, we could put it on the title and uh, we could have lots of fun. We do have a Svelte kit version of this project that Carl is making. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description below. So you do want to get involved in this project. I can actually show you how it's looking so far already on the Eddie Hub community. Carl is doing a great job. It does look really good. And if I scroll down, here we go. Good first issue finder. We're gonna add this feature very, very soon. So it searches the entire GitHub at the moment. It just searches Eddie Hub. But if we go to the deployed version on our Kubernetes cluster, you'll see it looks a lot prettier than what I've done. You can filter by these and you can open it directly in Gitpod, which is also awesome as well. Look forward to seeing you in the Eddie Hub Discord as well so we can chat and collaborate between live streams and videos.